Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Poziom podstawowy. Usłyszysz dwukrotnie teksty do zadań od pierwszego do trzeciego. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz dźwięk. W nagraniu przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z poleceniami oraz treścią zadań sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania w trakcie słuchania nagrań oraz w czasie przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie pierwsze. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. Today I'm talking to Peggy Fleming, a figure skater who won many medals during her career. Peggy, who was your inspiration when you were learning to skate? It wasn't just one person. I trained with a few great coaches in my career. I also admired many talented skaters and athletes. All of them were important to me and helped me work out my own skating style. Sometimes I also watched ballet dancers on stage. It's a pity I never took ballet lessons myself because this kind of dance is really helpful for skaters. What was it like to take part in the 1968 Olympics? It was definitely the most important event in my career. When I arrived in France, I was afraid something awful was going to happen. But I didn't let stress take control of me on the ice. I just wanted to do my best. And I won. It was an amazing experience. Have you ever tried doing something different, not related to skating? No. Figure skating is my life. I'm 70 now, and I don't skate in competitions, but I'm still involved in this sport. Since the 1980s, I've been employed by the ABC Sports Channel as an expert commenting on skaters' performances during figure skating competitions. I'm lucky because I still do something I enjoy, and I get a lot of positive feedback from viewers. You also work with children. How do you keep the sport of figure skating alive for them? Well, I don't think I have to do much. Figure skating is still very popular in the US. Young people watch experienced skaters having fun on ice and doing different jumps and spins, and it's really inspiring for them. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Today I'm talking to Peggy Fleming, a figure skater who won many medals during her career. Peggy, who was your inspiration when you were learning to skate? It wasn't just one person. I trained with a few great coaches in my career. I also admired many talented skaters and athletes. All of them were important to me and helped me work out my own skating style. Sometimes I also watch ballet dancers on stage. It's a pity I never took ballet lessons myself because this kind of dance is really helpful for skaters. What was it like to take part in the 1968 Olympics? It was definitely the most important event in my career. When I arrived in France, I was afraid something awful was going to happen. But I didn't let stress take control of me on the ice. I just wanted to do my best. And I won. It was an amazing experience. Have you ever tried doing something different, not related to skating? No. Figure skating is my life. I'm 70 now, and I don't skate in competitions, but I'm still involved in this sport. Since the 1980s, I've been employed by the ABC Sports Channel as an expert commenting on skaters' performances during figure skating competitions. I'm lucky because I still do something I enjoy, and I get a lot of positive feedback from viewers.
You also work with children. How do you keep the sport of figure skating alive for them? Well, I don't think I have to do much. Figure skating is still very popular in the US. Young people watch experienced skaters having fun on ice and doing different jumps and spins, and it's really inspiring for them. Zadanie drugie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. It was going to be my first day at a new job, so I wanted to arrive on time. I followed my girlfriend's advice and gave myself an hour for the twenty-minute journey to the office. However, my bus got stuck in a horrible traffic jam. When I finally got off, I saw an elderly man lying in the street. I called an ambulance and waited until it came. As a result, I got to work fifteen minutes late. Two. I was taking a language course. During one of the lessons, we had to give a three-minute presentation. However, generally, the students' presentations were much longer. My presentation took exactly three minutes. The teacher seemed disappointed that it wasn't longer. I explained that if he wanted ten minutes, I could do ten, but I had prepared for three. Looking at his face, I guessed he didn't like my answer. But I got a good mark. Three. I was in the middle of the second chapter, commenting on its contents when Jane showed up. Half an hour after the bell, she asked if she'd missed anything. Can you imagine? I replied we were just waiting for her to start, and then it turned out that she didn't have the book. When I handed her mine, she asked if I could repeat everything I'd said so far. When I refused, she answered angrily that it wasn't her fault that the bus hadn't arrived on time. Four. I don't care if I sound old-fashioned, because actually it's got nothing to do with trends or generations. It's all about manners. When you're late, it shows you have bad manners and you don't care about other people. Why do you always arrive at seven thirty if you are invited to dinner at six? People hate waiting for no reason. When you're not punctual, they might get the impression that they can't rely on you. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. One. It was going to be my first day at a new job, so I wanted to arrive on time. I followed my girlfriend's advice and gave myself an hour for the twenty-minute journey to the office. However, my bus got stuck in a horrible traffic jam. When I finally got off, I saw an elderly man lying in the street. I called an ambulance and waited until it came. As a result, I got to work fifteen minutes late. Two. I was taking a language course. During one of the lessons, we had to give a three-minute presentation. However, generally, the students' presentations were much longer. My presentation took exactly three minutes. The teacher seemed disappointed that it wasn't longer. I explained that if he wanted ten minutes, I could do ten, but I had prepared for three. Looking at his face, I guessed he didn't like my answer. But I got a good mark. Three. 
I was in the middle of the second chapter, commenting on its contents, when Jane showed up. Half an hour after the bell. She asked if she'd missed anything. Can you imagine? I replied we were just waiting for her to start. And then it turned out that she didn't have the book. When I handed her mine, she asked if I could repeat everything I'd said so far. When I refused, she answered angrily that it wasn't her fault that the bus hadn't arrived on time. Four. I don't care if I sound old-fashioned, because actually it's got nothing to do with trends or generations. It's all about manners. When you're late, it shows you have bad manners and you don't care about other people. Why do you always arrive at 7.30 if you are invited to dinner at 6? People hate waiting for no reason. When you're not punctual, they might get the impression that they can't rely on you. Zadanie trzecie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. What amazes me about bears is that they are very intelligent. One day when I was taking pictures in a national park, I noticed a young bear watching me closely. Suddenly it started to walk towards me. I was afraid it might turn aggressive, so I decided to hide in my car. But I left my camera on a bench. It was ready to take a picture. As I locked the door, the bear came up to the camera and pressed the button completely ignoring me. Have a look at the bear's photo. Very interesting, isn't it? Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. What amazes me about bears is that they are very intelligent. One day when I was taking pictures in a national park, I noticed a young bear watching me closely. Suddenly it started to walk towards me. I was afraid it might turn aggressive, so I decided to hide in my car. But I left my camera on a bench. It was ready to take a picture. As I locked the door, the bear came up to the camera and pressed the button, completely ignoring me. Have a look at the bear's photo. Very interesting, isn't it? Two. Refrigerators are more complex than you think. Did you know that the doors are the warmest, the bottom shelf the coldest, and the drawers the most humid? That's why products such as mayonnaise and orange juice can stay fresh on the racks in the fridge doors, while products like eggs and meat are best stored on the bottom shelf. Tune in to our 7am program tomorrow to find out more useful facts about your fridge. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Refrigerators are more complex than you think. Did you know that the doors are the warmest, the bottom shelf the coldest, and the drawers the most humid? That's why products such as mayonnaise and orange juice can stay fresh on the racks in the fridge doors, while products like eggs and meat are best stored on the bottom shelf. Tune in to our 7am program tomorrow to find out more useful facts about your fridge.
Three. Could you pass me the dress, please? Which one? The one you bought yesterday afternoon, or the other one? The other one, of course. That blue party dress I borrowed from Jane. Don't you have your own dresses? Did you really need to borrow one? Don't be a nuisance. See, I look great. But where are my shoes? Hurry up! We're late. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Could you pass me the dress, please? Which one? The one you bought yesterday afternoon, or the other one? The other one, of course. That blue party dress I borrowed from Jane. Don't you have your own dresses? Did you really need to borrow one? Don't be a nuisance. See, I look great. But where are my shoes? Hurry up! We're late. Four, and now some local news. A boy survived three nights in a deep cave thanks to a dog that kept him warm. Raoul was on his way home from school when he heard a dog barking inside a cave. When he was trying to rescue the dog, he fell inside. He shouted for help, but no one heard him. The boy and the dog stayed in the cave for three freezing nights. Fortunately, some local people found them. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. And now some local news. A boy survived three nights in a deep cave thanks to a dog that kept him warm. Raoul was on his way home from school when he heard a dog barking inside a cave. When he was trying to rescue the dog, he fell inside. He shouted for help, but no one heard him. The boy and the dog stayed in the cave for three freezing nights. Fortunately, some local people found them. Five. If you can't decide which charity to support, come and join us at our All Charity Festival. All the charitable organisations in our city will be there. This time, our aim is not to collect money, but to show our work and recruit volunteers. You'll certainly find an idea close to your heart. We have a surprise for you this time. We've invited great artists and public speakers to put on a show. We hope more of you will join us this year. Don't forget, come to the municipal park for the All Charity Festival this Saturday. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. If you can't decide which charity to support, come and join us at our All Charity Festival. All the charitable organisations in our city will be there. This time, our aim is not to collect money, but to show our work and recruit volunteers. You'll certainly find an idea close to your heart. We have a surprise for you this time. We've invited great artists and public speakers to put on a show. We hope more of you will join us this year. Don't forget, come to the municipal park for the All Charity Festival this Saturday. Six. Have you ever seen a movie and wondered where it was filmed? Many film lovers visit places where their favorite films were made. Such people are called set jetters. They often travel to another part of the world to see famous film locations. I've invited some of them to the studio today. If you stay with us, you will find out what it was like for them to be on the sets of their favorite films. Was it a dream come true? Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Have you ever seen a movie and wondered where it was filmed? Many film lovers visit places where their favorite films were made. 
Such people are called set jetters. They often travel to another part of the world to see famous film locations. I've invited some of them to the studio today. If you stay with us, you will find out what it was like for them to be on the sets of their favourite films. Was it a dream come true? Czas przeznaczony na tę część egzaminu minął.